Welcome. Please be seated. As chair of the department, I would like to welcome parents, family, friends, and colleagues, but especially welcome class of 2014. Congratulations, you made it, you did it. Here you are in your cute black robes after four exciting, stimulating years. You should be deeply proud of yourself. You graduated from the best sociology program in the country. But you didn't do it alone. It takes a community to graduate a Bruin and I would like to thank your support system sitting behind you. <laughs> Talking about family, I would like to take you back to that fateful Thanksgiving dinner a couple of years ago, just when your mom had a ladle with cranberry sauce dangling over the white tablecloth. Your uncle Terry turned to you and asked what you were doing at UCLA. You said you were thinking of becoming a sociology major. Silence. <laughs> Everyone looked at you, not sure what to think. Your mom's hand, still holding the ladle, started to quiver a bit. Then your little cousin broke the silence by asking, Mommy, what is sociology? A deep sigh of relief swept across the table because that was the question everyone wanted to ask you. You explained that sociology is the study of people doing things together. How doctors interact with patients, the difference a college degree makes across the life course, why obesity has become a policy priority, how likely employers are to hire immigrants, how civil unrest may destabilize nation states. Uncle Terry still looked skeptical. <laughs> he asked, what can you do with a sociology degree? And you answered, well, there are some famous people who were sociology majors. You may have heard of them, like the Reverend Martin Luther King, <laughs> LA Congresswoman Maxine Waters, Reverend Jesse Jackson, and former President Ronald Reagan. So, what a year it has been. Some very lucky students signed up for a small seminar in political sociology, and they got to meet President Obama last month at LAX. So you think, I get it. They were learning about the political process, and they saw how presidential visits are organized. That is true, but it's even more interesting. The president is actually surrounded by sociologists. The first lady, Michelle Obama, what do you think she majored in, in, in college? Right, sociology. And she's not the only one. The actor and public servant Carl Penn from the Harold and Coomer films facilitated the meeting. He worked in the White House as an associate director of public engagement, and he is also a graduate from our program. As these people's lives show, a sociology degree is not a ticket to one specific destination. Sociology is a key to many different doors. One of our alumni used the perfect metaphor for what it means to become a sociology alumna. She explained that commencement is like driving a car for the first time. You can look in the small rear view mirror and focus on what happened in your past, or you can look to the big windshield and take in the world. Sociology is a ticket to the entire world. Your windshield looks out on many roads, nonprofit sector, business, law, medicine, entertainment, administration, and education, and I invite you to take in the world. It's my greatest honor to introduce your commencement speaker. This is more difficult than it seems because our speaker is extraordinarily impressive. Susan Kellogg is president of the Contemporary Brands Coalition for VF Corporation, 
the largest apparel company in the Western Hemisphere. She's the CEO of three brands, Seven for All Mankind, Splendid, and Elamos. She began her fashion career at Macy's West, where she worked for eight years in several store and buying executive positions. She then moved on to a series of leadership positions with Liz Claiborne. Next, she served as CEO of Eli Tahari, where she significantly increased the fashion brand's international and retail businesses. So impressive, isn't it? Well, this career trajectory, however, does not do justice to Susan. She's also a proud mom of an adorable little girl. She's an active athlete. She's a dyed-in-the-wool UCLA sports fan, and she's a great philanthropist. But even that does not capture the full richness of Susan Kellogg. What you really need to know about her is that she's an ideas person. Companies hire her when they want someone who can think outside the box. And where do these ideas come from? <laughs> well, they come probably from many places, but also from us. Susan Kellogg is a sociology graduate from UCLA. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to introduce Susan. I have no idea who he was talking about. My gosh, I was just going to say how lucky you are to have those three students represent you. Um, so composed and on it. They've got it so together. I think I'm just going to scrap my whole speech and say they said it all. Um, you know, hang in there. We're only about 10 minutes away from a big moment. So I want to say good morning, Bruin graduates. This is really your day. And let me be the first to congratulate you on your collective and individual achievements. June 14th, 2014, you will soon be treasured alumni and sociology graduates of the University of California at Los Angeles. All things are possible. We know, as fellow sociology majors, that some of us may have been most interested in finding the easy way out of UCLA. But let there be no doubt from this day forward, you are an expert in the study of society social institutions, social relationships, and therefore have much to contribute. You will help the rest of us understand the written and unwritten rules that we live by, the assumptions we hold, and the world of contrasts we live in. In short, you are qualified to do absolutely anything you want and to add value every day in your life to guide us to a better tomorrow and be the leaders that we so desperately need. Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> really, wow. <laughs> I'm flattered and honored to be here. I'm not entirely sure why, even after all of that. Maybe it was because I named my dog Cade after our illustrious quarterback, Cade McNown. <laughs> Maybe it's because I run Seven for All Mankind, which was named after a quarterback, number seven, the founder's son. But for whatever reason, you may recognize my name from breakfast this morning. University dignitaries, parents, relatives, and friends of today's graduates, I welcome you to a start of day that will be punctuated with pride, maybe a few tears, and celebration of your achievements. This is a very special moment in time, one to be treasured. Today is a Twitter, Snapchat, Insta sort of day to be proud of, and indeed, it's my privilege to join you. I thought a lot about what to share with you today and talked to a few others that preceded me, like Annie last year. I was told, first, don't try to be funny, although April did a heck of a job. <laughs> Humor never works, usually. Second, remember, every commencement ceremony has a commencement speaker, whether you guys want one or not, so don't sweat it. On the other hand, commencement speakers are usually remembered for their failures and not their successes, so don't screw it up. And fourth, perhaps most importantly, it's all about being brief because it's hot out there and I know you have parties to go to. <laughs> yeah, yes, and, and I did hear as sociology majors, you still know how to do that, so that's good. Before my formal remarks to the graduates, I really want to first speak to the friends and the family of those we honor today. I see you out there. You're the people with proud written on your forehead. It's coupled with a big smile and probably relief 
that they made it, and hopefully will be soon off your payroll. <laughs> Graduates, look for your loved ones. I ask that you join me in standing up and applauding them for their support of you over the years. It doesn't stop. Mine are still out there for me many, many years later. It seems like yesterday, when I was a student here, and I'm never going to admit when, but it was before MySpace and Facebook, and quite frankly, it was before cell phones and laptops. But just know when I was here, it was a time we beat USC in both football, Xavier, and basketball. And we'll get there again. We're well on our way with the new coaches. I've also always loved this place. I knew when I was 13 that this would be my home. So like Mabel, I, I figured it out a little later than her at 13. She knew at five, so I give her that. Um, but when the time came, it made it easy because there were no campus tours or visits. There was no debates with parents, friends, counselors, teachers. I just applied to one school, UCLA. It was a very, very easy decision for me. It was winter in Chicago, and UCLA was playing USC in football. And my nine-year-old brother, John, at the time, was teaching me the game. However, what I really noticed was the sunshine, the t-shirts, and the tank tops. And UCLA won. Cold winters would be a thing of the past. With good grades in hand and the ignorance and bliss of an overconfident 17-year-old, I knew I would get in. And fortunately, I did, because I didn't have a plan B. <laughs> Still don't. While my decision to attend was certain and proved to be absolutely perfect for me, my journey on campus was sometimes filled with uncertainty. Sociology, truth be told, no offense, was not my first choice. I tried a lot of different paths along the way, from pre-med to economics to art like April, North and South Campus. My blessing was my curse. I liked everything. Despite my uncertainty, I did see the value in patience and understanding that one day, hopefully, I'd figure it all out. It was at UCLA that I learned my first life lesson. Lesson number one, the world is run by those who keep showing up. So I persevered. The answer came to me when my UCLA counselor, Mary Jo Johnson, sat me down my junior year and said I had to declare a major if I wanted to graduate. So I handed her my transcripts and asked her, what's the quickest way out? And she said, sociology. Here, here we are. Ms. Johnson was my guide to the next lesson. Life lesson number two, don't be afraid to ask for help ever, no matter who you are. Be bold enough to ask for guidance. Questions are very powerful tools of discovery, as you heard from your professor, so they will serve you well. My senior year, I visited the Career Placement Center on campus. And like all of you, I knew I needed to get a full-time job and fast. Although reg fees were only $500 when I was here, it's a little different now, um, but I still needed that job fast. I had lots of bills. I signed up for every interview that accepted sociology majors, and I got two callbacks. Life lesson number three, use your available resources. Truth be told, Macy's offered me a chance to fly to San Francisco the same weekend we were going to play Cal. Procter & Gamble only offered me an opportunity to fly to Cincinnati. Yeah, really tough choice there. Needless to say, I ended up in San Francisco and watched the game. Life lesson number four, luck. It's the intersection of opportunity and perseverance. I was actually really impressed with the executives I met at Macy's. I remember telling my friends and family, don't worry, I'll be back in just a year. I just think it'll be fun to live there. Well, you know, 20 years later, here I am, 20 plus, if truth be told. What I didn't tell them was I had quietly made a deal with myself. I had set my sights on beating the odds as part of the Macy's executive training program. 
I knew that I would be one of the two out of 40 that would make it to buyer. I've always liked to challenge, still do, and facing tough odds, have plenty of chances at that. So life lesson number five, set a goal for yourself, only you, that you find motivating and inspiring, and be all in, not just a little bit, but all in. And even though it worked out well, it was not a straight line to success. There were inevitable setbacks and wins, inconvenient assignments and moves, missed family events, sorry, John, missed your wedding, thank you for forgiving me, fashion week, weddings don't go together, good bosses and bad. There were times when I was tempted to give up, but I didn't. Life lesson number six, never ever make a decision when you are down. In my case, I just called my mom, still do. Eventually, I reached my goal. At age 25, I was a buyer, and I've had a great run since, although not in the cereal business or in the horse business. There were early hours and very long days, and was it worth it? You betcha. I won't bore you further with the rest of my story, other than to say it has been quite a ride, and still is. I get up every day not thinking about my career end game or being CEO. I've learned just to enjoy every day and be passionate about what I do, giving it my all, and know that it is both art and science every day. Years later, it's clear to me that I chose not only the right college, the right major, and the right career, it may be in the fashion industry, but like most businesses, as you've heard, it really is all about people and inspiring others. And you are really the most equipped here at UCLA to do that. And I think that you have many more options. You don't have to be stuck like me making jeans and t-shirts. You can do absolutely anything you want. Oh, by the way, I don't feel stuck at all. I love every bit of it. And I'm successful in part, I know, because I am a graduate, of sociology at UCLA. So, as I begin to close, I will summarize with the lessons I've learned in the hopes that it will make your road and lives a little bit easier. Remember, the world is run by those who show up. Be bold enough to ask for guidance from others. Use those available resources. Luck is the intersection of opportunity and perseverance. Set a goal for yourself. Make sure it's only for yourself, nobody else, that you find motivating, inspiring, and be all in. And never make a decision when you're down. If I may add just three more items to keep in mind. First, it's often said it's never too late which is absolutely true, I'm living proof. But I will also remind you that sometimes it's too early. I'm a little worried about you millennials. Be patient. Let things play out. Good things will come to you. Second, don't let work define who you are ever. Be smarter and better than that. Third, do what you love. Follow your dreams and don't let others tell you what you cannot do. Just two years ago, I gave birth, as you heard, to a beautiful little girl. What you don't know, it was by far my greatest accomplishment of everything you heard Stefan say. At age 51, I set a new standard for delivering a child through natural birth. Now, every time I look at my daughter, I give thanks, and I'm reminded that anything is possible, absolutely anything. And ladies and gentlemen, I just want to thank you for providing me an opportunity to be here with you. It's really my privilege to be here on your day, which is nothing short of epic. I wish you a happy, healthy, and engaging, rewarding life, which I am absolutely confident that you will have. And you will certainly make the world a better place. I expect nothing less from the 2014 sociology graduates of UCLA.